I'm Daryl Shindell. I'm the Marketing Communications Manager for Morris Industries. And uh, uh, I'm going to welcome Casey Davis, our Chief Executive Officer and President of Morris Industries, just to say a few words of welcome. And uh, thank you very much again for coming. Well, thanks, Daryl, and, and welcome, everybody. Uh, thanks for taking time. We know it's a pretty busy uh, time with the show getting up and running, so uh, we appreciate you coming. Uh, today's preview uh, is really continuing to build on the momentum of, of last week's product launch in, uh, in Yorkton. We had over uh, 400 uh, people that attended, uh, dealers, uh, distributors from all of our key markets, Canada, of course, uh, United States, Australia, uh, Kazakhstan, Russia, Ukraine, just to name a few. So it was really good for us because uh, Morris is an international company. We uh, we make our seating and uh, hay hauling equipment and we sell it all over the world. Uh, this product launch is, a, is a, quite a significant event for us because what you'll see is we're, we're really turning over more than 50% of our, our product, uh, kind of our new technology if you will. So we're pretty excited about it. Uh, we had a, a very good event in, in Yorkton. It was well received and, and uh, we think it will be equally as well received uh, this week uh, at Farm Progress Show. Uh, while the dealers and distributors are excited about it, of course, the, the true judges will be the farmers. So this is really our chance to showcase it and, uh, and we're looking forward to, uh, to showing it to you today and then to everyone for the, during the remainder of the week. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Don Henry. Uh, he's going to have a couple of guys that are going to give him a hand. And uh, Don is our chief uh, operating officer and has been instrumental in this uh, product development and product launch. So he's going to lead you through the equipment. And, and who knows, we might even take a few of these uh, tarps off the equipment so you can see what it looks like. Thanks again for coming, Don. OK, thanks, Casey. We're very proud of this equipment, and uh, we're glad, glad to show it off to you today. Uh, first of all, we're going to talk about the disc drill. Obviously, we're in the air seating market, and the disc drill has become a, a very important part of, of many seating operations. Uh, we know about in Australia, there's areas in Australia, very rocky, they like to use a disc drill. They really want to conserve their moisture in Australia because it can be very dry. Of course, they've had some wet years, but it can be very dry there, as we all know. Uh, Eastern Europe, they really like the speed of a disc drill. They don't put a lot of fertilizer on, so fertilizer placement's not as critical for them, but they like the speed, so they've been moving towards a disc drill. You know, this, uh, I guess I'll backtrack also in, in the U.S. If you looked at probably two-thirds to three-quarters of North Dakota, very important market for us, the disc drill has become very prominent there. They're seeding more corn down there. Obviously, they seed that with a planter, but the soybeans they'll seed with a disc drill. So those are markets we weren't participating in until we've now introduced our razor. Uh, as I said, it's, a, it's, it's been an ongoing process. We started about five years ago. We imported some, some openers from South America. We had some competitive models. We had some, our own, some of our own ideas. We put them on a plot drill. We ran that plot drill for about two years, both up here and in the southern U.S. in the wintertime to try to get an idea on it, and from there it evolved to what you see today. So, you know, we found that there was a lot of good features in a lot of the openers, but not everybody was doing it the right way we didn't think. So we were able to look at what they were doing and try to combine it into one. And that's what we have with the Razor. And I'm, I'm going to ask Garth maybe to expand on the features of the Razor. Uh, just to backtrack a little bit, we had four in the field last year, we had ten in the field this year and now we're going to a full uh, commercial uh, offering. So, uh, Garth, if I can ask, ask you to talk about it. Okay. Don, let's talk about the, uh, uh, how it's a new design. Now, what we have is, is a walking beam. So you've got, uh, basically, you've got your, your disc opener, uh, and it's connected on a beam with the packer. And uh, when this machine goes in the ground, typically at higher speeds, a disc will want to rotate itself out of the ground naturally. And when, they're, uh, when you've got your disc opener and your, and your packer connected together, basically that packer keeps that, that disc from wanting to ride out. So we feel that there's some bona fide advantages at higher speeds of maintaining penetration and consistency of depth. So, so that's a real positive thing. Some of the other things that we had feedback on from, uh, from disc users, and, and we, we had quite a consultative process, I think, not only with Morse customers, but users of disc drills, 
Uh, you'll notice that uh, the gauge wheel that regulates the depth on the on the disc as, as a spoke design, and that allows uh, soil uh, that collects in between there to freely flow out. And uh, we felt that that was something on other disc machines in the market that didn't have that. A lot of growers are having to go in and buy aftermarket parts for that. Uh, so we wanted to have that as a standard feature, and that's worked out quite well considering how wet the last four years have been. So, so that's a, a good little feature of it. Um, the other thing, uh, we wanted to go with a little bit larger disc blades, uh, heavier bearings, and we've got carbide plated scrapers. And this is all around trying to reduce the level of maintenance on this. And there's less moving parts on this uh, compared to you know, disc designs of 10 years ago. So uh, this is a sort of a machine that farmers are gonna go to the field with, and they're gonna work with, with a minimum amount of setting. Um, I guess another, another thing that we, we wanted to uh, bring across, we've got a very good hydraulic system with the contour drills, uh, with an accumulator that holds the pressure constant, and parallel linkage uh, maintains uh, a more consistent uh, uh, opener angle and, and uh, maintains your scraper angle so your seat placement is more consistent. And also the parallel linkage allows the machine to fold up uh, and, and give you more ground clearance when it's in transport. So those are some, I think, of the real key highlights on it, Don, so thanks. Yeah, well, you're right, Garth. Thanks, thanks for your comments. Uh, well, as you can see, the guys have pulled the, uh, the tarps off the, uh, the air cart line. One of the things I think that Morris has had over the years with the air cart line that we can hang our hat on is our metering uh, accuracy, I think, is second to none. I, I've been involved with other companies. I've been involved with different products on our farm. And I think the Morris metering system is second to none as far as your metering accuracy, getting your pounds per acre on, I'd put it up against anybody any day. Another thing that we've been very good at is our air distribution system. We use a fat, flat fan distribution system for our air, which has allowed us to really get up to 71 foot units with a single fan, which nobody else has really been able to do. So we, we have a very efficient air system. So the things that we need to note that on our air carts, those are things we're not changing. We haven't changed the metering system. We haven't changed the, the, the air distribution system. The other thing that I think our 8 Series air cart was known for was for safety. And if you've been involved with the, the market, you'll know that the 8 Series featured a walk-through tank. And there were some goods and bads about that. It was nice. It was very level. You had lots to hold on to. The downside was, yeah, you were in the, in the uh, dust sometime. And the other thing was our ladder on the 8 Series was virtually vertical. So if you were carrying up a pail or trying to carry a bag of canola up on top of the cart, it wasn't that safe, and we needed to make some adjustments there. The 8 Series cart had been with us for about seven years, okay? So it was time for a facelift, and that's why we've come out and introduced the new air cart line here this year. Probably the most distinguishing feature you'll notice when you look at it right now is the uh, is a silver color. That is a silver metallic paint with a clear coat over top. As you can imagine with an air cart, you're working in a, in a very hostile environment. You're dealing with fertilizer, you're dealing with uh, urea, sulfur, and generally you're dealing with moisture that combines with that fertilizer. And so it really tends to deteriorate the paint job or the metal on an air cart. We, uh, we approached DuPont uh, coatings about the paint. Uh, Robert Blomowitz, uh, James Ensler here from DuPont coatings with us today as well. Um, and, and they've done a great job of recommending a certain type of paint that will give us the best finish from an appearance standpoint and a durability standpoint that we're able to provide to our customers now. So as I said, this, this is a, is a, it's got a primer, it's got a silver metallic, and then a clear coat over top. And as Robert says, if you're driving down the highway and you look at a Peterbilt truck, our air carts have the same finish. So that's where the industry has gone. Our customers are paying big dollars for this equipment now, they want it to look good and they want it to last. So that's where we're at. I talked a little bit about the three features that we had with the 8 Series. Uh, the one was the safety aspect. Uh, as you can see also, kind of a distinguishing feature on the air cart now is a, is a stairway up the back and a walkway across the top. And it's something that we wanted to maintain that safety and that's something now that we're offering on this cart. And uh, I think our customers are going to appreciate it. Garth, there's some other, what we would call creature comforts, efficiency gains that we've added now with the 9 Series carts, and if you could talk about that, that'd be great. When we consider uh, farmers using our equipment, uh, they're with it, you know, like 
probably 18 hours a day for probably minimum. The average farmer is probably, their seeding window is 20 to 25 days. So, you know, when you're with a machine that long and spend that many hours, some of these little creature comforts are, are real difference makers for them. And uh, we put quite a focus on with this 9 series uh, to make these a little bit easier and, and nicer to use. Uh, so, and you know, I think as Don uh, alluded to earlier, fit and finish, I think, is, is a, a much more important thing nowadays than it was 10 years ago. So even small details like, uh, like the fiberglass uh, safety covers that go over the metering systems and whatnot, and just uh, tidying up the, uh, like the, where the hydraulic pipes and whatnot, uh, they make quite a difference in the overall appearance, and certainly the paint, uh, it's, it looks quite sharp. Previously, we, we had a conveyor system and we had uh, an auger system, but many farmers today, they'll have um, semi-trailers with belly dump trailers, and they were looking for, uh, for an option that was kind of between the two, like the conveyor would fit under the belly dump trailers, but some of them are quite content to have a 10-inch flighting, uh, like you see in front of us with this 9450 card. And what we've done here is, is we've got an extended hopper, and it will uh, it'll slide in place and fit underneath the belly dump hoppers quite nicely so uh, it's very kind of user friendly and we've elected to go with a, a hydraulic orbit motor to drive the uh, the feeder flighting in that longer hopper uh, to make that work. Also on this uh, as well you'll, you'll see uh, there's a there's actually a, a wireless uh, controller to control the two hydraulic arms so you move this um, you move this auger around hydraulically, which is nicer considering the average age of farmers has been creeping up. Uh, if you've got something just to make their life a little easier for them uh, with this hydraulic mover, it's quite nice. So there'll be a little lanyard they can hang around their neck and, and uh, they'll have this wireless remote that they'll be able to move things around. It's quite and in nice. that case, Garth, if they've got the wireless remote, they can be up on top of the cart, they can move in the auger from bin to bin, whichever, uh, whatever works for them. Yeah. They don't it, have to come down and move it physically. It gives them a nice freedom. You're absolutely right, Don. So before, as, as Garth mentioned earlier, we had a plate on the yeah. bottom that had wing nuts. You had to remove the wing nuts. You had to knock the plate out of the way and so on. And, you know, again, these were, this is feedback that we've received from our customers saying, you know what, we need something more convenient than that. We need something faster. And, uh, uh, so, you know, as we say, our slogan is, we hear you. So we have to react to that when a customer tells us we have to improve it. And the feedback we've had from our dealers so far and hopefully the customers this week is that's a really positive improvement for us.